No, no, that was, that, that was intentional. Are you genuinely trying to make... No, oh, that was right. intentional. The, 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 the first one that was a bit oh, rubbish. Yeah. But the second one, it oh, sort of got a bit tangled. Uh, I was like, oh. I'm not going back. There's no hiding from this son. Obviously, you kind of got this sense of community spirit on this film. Um, how are you able to get to know each other and bond through this experience on set? We spent a lot... Oh, on set. Oh, on when I, when well, I, we, we, we were always in the same... Uh, environment, staying in the same hotels, whatever, so you know, we'd always team up afterwards and have some dinner and chat absolute rubbish. Um, yeah, it was literally. Was, yeah, we were really lucky though, like, it's such a great group of lads and um, you know, there's a good, a good solid bond between everybody. There's a lot of time to do it as well because in a film like this there's a lot of set pieces and there's a lot of choreography when it comes yeah. to on the mm -hmm. water and they, they take quite a long time, it takes a long um, task to get boats in certain places. So there was a lot of downtime yeah. on set as well. Of waiting about on the boat. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously on this film as well, you're working with, alongside other younger actors, but also older, more established actors like mm -hmm. Mark Rylance or Tom Hardy. Um, how did that challenge your approach to acting, as well as obviously being in a Christopher Nolan film? Yeah. Uh, by osmosis, it kind of just seeped in, and you you were just playing the situations as honestly as possible. And, and when, when you're working opposite somebody like Mark, it just felt like a, a, a breeze. It just, you just, it just happened, because it was so easy to to just be in the moment with those couple of guys, you know. And they're all very non starry They all have that yeah. common. The, 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 big act, the bigger actors in this film, you know, Killian included and, and, and Ken, they're very... Mm. The, the one thing they've got in common is that they're not very starry. They're actors. They're just blokes. They are actors. They're just blokes. You know? They are actors. And, they're you know, a lot of them are stage actors. Yeah. As well. So that's just probably why they're like them. Well, you're both performing in more physical roles in the air and the sea. Um, without the focus of lots and lots of dialogue. Um, how did that change your approach as actors? It's great sometimes when you don't have a lot of dialogue. It's actually, you probably had the most, yeah, probably sort of <clears throat> in the film. No, it's great, it's, it's, it's great fun. I, I love when, when you rely more on the physicality of a character. Yeah. It's great, you know, and, and you think less when you're in, just in, the, in a physical moment, when you're trying to get out of something or trying to run away from something, you think less, because mm. you do anyway. And you're not yeah. caught up with how that line sounded, or mm. you know, how do, where, where do I put the intonation in this line? And it's just, that's that's not important. You're you're completely focused on the action and you know what you're doing and what situation you're in. You don't have to think about anything else. What practical skills did you pick up doing this film? I learned how to throw a rope. <laughs> Although the take that they've used in the film is where I, I botch it up a bit. <laughs> That's the, the, that's the real realism of it. <laughs> yeah. but, um, I was mastering it. I had like <laughs> so hours and hours of. <laughs> so hold on, in that take where you don't make it. Yeah. No, no, that was that, that was genuinely intentional. trying to make. No, oh, that was right. intentional. The, the, the first one that was a bit oh, rubbish, yeah. but the second one it oh, sort of got a bit tangled. Uh, I was like, oh. Uh, but yeah, but no, that, that, so that was a skill that I acquired. I was watching the film. I was like, oh, he didn't throw the rope properly. That's it. I'm yeah, yeah. yeah. Ruined. Yeah. <laughs> one star. <laughs> So, how much of this experience was no longer about acting, but just relying on and trusting your own instincts? Most of it was like that. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Everything was happening around you, so you didn't really have so to. No acting required. Almost. In a lot of situations, yeah, that's very true. Um, the more intimate scenes, obviously, yeah. you know, you have to uh, dig in. But yeah, for like the the big action sequences, it was all happening. Chris was more than happy to fly as many planes in as possible and, and get you to see them and what was happening for real. I take it, I mean, you are obviously both close in age to people who would have fought in Dunkirk. What do you think audiences of our age um, will identify and connect with most in this film? Community spirit, mm. I think, is one of the greatest examples of it, Dunkirk. And I think, um, you know, we, you know, unfortunately and unfortunately, have had circumstances, you know, things happen in this country recently where you have seen incredible community spirit and I think you know if you were to talk about the Dunkirk spirit it obviously very much is still alive and kicking in this country and I think um, it's it's not too, it's not too much about the war mm. this film or anything political it's more about like I say that the moment when those boats come over and you you guys especially you know mm. it's the idea of doing something for someone else the selflessness and putting it. your trust in people who aren't necessarily on your team you know I don't mean the enemy, but you know the civilians and the soldiers. The soldiers putting putting their trust in the civilians and you know giving them the trust to take them home. And resilience and survival. And, yeah. Watching the film, it's such a powerful experience. Were you making it 
knowing how it's going to feel like as an audience? I, I mean, it's always difficult with a film when, when you're making films, is that it's, um, because film in general is such a technical thing, it's, it's very, it is very stop-starty, so it's, I don't think you do spend your time going, oh my God, I'm, I'm in Dunkirk. And, 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 you know, cause, and I think it's important as well because I think the guys that we were representing weren't necessarily there thinking, God, I'm part of history. They're just, just, just thinking day, about, what am I, yeah, I need yeah. to get that guy out of there. And I think it's sort Very of... Very pragmatic. And, yeah, yeah. It's, it's bred into you on a film set because you aren't... Unless they had music playing the whole time when we were on film. Yeah. It's a point set. Yeah. How do you sort of reflect back on the experience now then? Kind of all just seems a little bit blurry and a bit, mm -hmm. a bit uh, surreal. Yeah, it was like what, it was like watching the film the other day. It was just like that first impression was was amazing, but I didn't really get to take in the film because it was just sort of reliving all these mental situations. <coughs> um, yeah, it was quite quite an odd one to think back. But yeah, such a thrilling. And, Amazing experience. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Thanks, Thanks Cheers.